What do you think is the most important thing that's uh, going to redefine the world <laughs> to, today? Maybe that's putting a little bit melodramatically. <laughs> oh, well, I think it'll be um, the exciting event when Janet Yellen runs out of excuses mm -hmm. about um, not raising rates. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the, the, the main driver. I mm -hmm. mean, at the moment, the world's decided that the Fed is going to continue to find reasons not to raise rates. Mm. Therefore, the dollar remains a funding currency for carry trades. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, the dollar is weak and everything else is strong. Right. And stocks go up because there's plenty of money right. <clears throat> and it's not going to get any more expensive. Right. And then at some point in time, you know, mm -hmm. this very low, slow recovery in the US, but ultra low productivity recovery will absorb so much uh, labor that um, rage rates will begin to rise. And at that point in time, the Fed was being behind the curve. Right. So uh, every time we uh, train the cameras on Janet Yellen, we have these two-day meets or whatever, and she's got these long, drawn-out soliloquies, it's going to be the same old, same old, just to change the words in between the, uh, well, look, the if punctuation? Well, look, if she was to go on like that, I mean, basically, you're in a world which is stuck at low interest rates, uh, and uh, you're absorbing labor. In Europe as well, you're absorbing labor extremely quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, U European unemployment rates are down 2% since the peak, and 1% on a year down, mm -hmm. which is, for Europe is just dramatic change. So at some point in time, you're going to have to say, well, <clears throat> we've absorbed all the labor and now there's an inflow where it, you, there's no more output gap and we've got to normalize rates and if that does not happen then you go on in this world in which money seems to be infinite and elastic in which the fed will do nothing and the europeans will continue to chase a an elusive um inflation target of two percent right. and the japanese will continue to do what they do best which is impersonate a corpse so <laughs> It sounds like nobody's in charge right now. We've got uh, countries uh, like Kuroda and impersonating corpses. Uh, we've got Yellen uh, going through the motions of talking, but really uh, being so dictated to by external events that she's got no control of what's going in so, uh, on inside her own economy. Who is, who is in charge? Is anybody in charge? Uh, well, we don't have to have anybody in charge. Yeah, I, don't, I think, um, no. I, I don't think there's anyone really flying the plane, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, because markets are the automatic pilot and what markets will eventually do mm. is they will go back to the scenario whereby the US is going to be the strongest economy, Japan is going to be the weakest economy and Europe is going to be stuck in the middle, which means that in relative monetary policy terms, the US is likely to be the strong currency again. Right. But for that to happen, you've got to break out of this idea that the Fed is in stasis and nothing is ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. Actually, things are happening all the time. The yeah. economies are progressing. Right. And at some point in time, this is going to be quite clear that you're back to the same paradigm as before, yeah. which is that the US economy is the strongest and therefore will have the tightest mon tighter monetary policy. But you are getting stasis in the US, though. I mean, yeah, all this no stuff, doubt. this 5% unemployment rate and all that, uh, and uh, everything was a result of people just extracting themselves and pretending they're invisible in this, in, in, in this world. That's the result of... That's the result of what you term stasis. Well, yes, it is. Uh, and I mean, the, the, the most amazing thing is, is the speed at which the US economy and now the European economy and the Japanese economy are absorbing labor. Mm. And it is, of course, a labor which is partly coming out of a higher participation rate, partly, mm. but it is especially people with very low qualifications. So they don't get paid any money. Mm. So while the employment goes up and the unemployment goes down, the wage rates don't move. Now, the question is, is that a permanent state of affairs? Right. Are we living in a world in which labor has lost bargaining power and in which technology makes them even cheaper because, you know, they're up against free apps as a source of production? Yeah. Or are we living in a world in which uh, the normal rules of supply and demand apply? Right. And that's the differences between the sort of, uh, currency and bond and equity markets you're facing today based yeah. on stasis and what could happen in the future which is back to the old normal of the US leading the way.